so often that people focus so much on the cross and have this sort of um, false notion that Christ died to satisfy God's justice and pay a just death penalty for mankind which is really a, a rather new doctrine and uh, that they forget about the incarnation of God they forget about what the nativity or what Christmas actually means and I see people always saying well we're going to put Christ back in Christmas and then they focus on the miraculous birth of a little baby 2,000 years ago and forget that this is the incarnation of the living God that God became man in order to rescue us out of our bondage in order to reunite God and man and himself and to conquer what actually held us in bondage that is the fear of death remember that Apostle Paul in, in uh, his letter to the Hebrews says that through fear of death man was all his lifetime held in bondage by him who had the power of death namely the evil one and uh, so trampling down death by death that Christ destroyed the power of death and so destroyed the fear of death and liberated us from the fear of death that's what we were redeemed from was from the fear of death and Satan held us in bondage through that fear and uh, that's why Paul in another place says we've not been given over in bondage to a spirit of fear uh, and uh, the, the beloved apostle says that whoever still has fear has not yet learned how to love because perfect love drives out fear because fear has torment and um, so this is I suppose the best starting point when one wants to discuss Orthodox Christianity as opposed to Neo-Christianity and uh, to understand that there was never uh, the notion that God had to have blood revenge on us through Jesus Christ that Christ was a human sacrifice to satisfy God's justice or God's vindictiveness that that was never a Christian teaching and it didn't come into existence till after the year 1000 and uh, so I think that's one of the best places to begin the mystery of redemption is the mystery of the co-suffering love of God for mankind and Paul says the same thing in the Hebrews when he said that we do not have a high priest who is unaware of our suffering who is unaware of our struggle but that Christ himself has entered into our suffering and entered into our struggle and this is what co-suffering love means that he enters into our suffering in order to heal it and to, to liberate us you, you can't uh, you, you can only be redeemed from one who holds you in bondage that's what the word redemption means to be purchased out of bondage and we were not in bondage to God so Christ did not say die to save us from God we were in bondage to Satan through the fear of death and this is what the whole focus of Pascha means this is the very meaning of the resurrection of Christ and every part of the hymnology about the resurrection of Christ tells us that we were redeemed from the power of death the fear of death which was the power that Satan had over us and um, so this is this is how we have to begin understanding that first and foremost the church is a spiritual hospital and when you look at the uh, story of the Good Samaritan it was a parable of course it didn't happen in reality but what's the real meaning of that story <clears throat> uh, first of all a stranger we don't know whether he was a Jew or not probably the intention was that he was but we don't know if he was a stranger a foreigner from outside or somewhere whatever but we know that those people who were self-righteous and who really knew the, the scripture a Pharisee a priest a Levite all of these people who are profoundly knowledgeable uh, about the scripture saw the man in the ditch bleeding to death and, and passed him by they left him there and along came a Samaritan who was a foreigner an outcast outside the holy nation and he sees the man and is moved with compassion and you know the story how he takes him to the inn and places him in the inn and says look after him until I come again and the other way of looking at that story is the fact that Christ was also an outcast he was also rejected 
and he came as a stranger, not from normal surroundings, but actually came down from heaven through the ever virgin Theotokos. And he found us wounded and bleeding beside the road because we'd been wounded by Satan, who is the thief of our souls, the thief of our spiritual life. And he's the one who's beaten us and stripped us of our original garment uh, of, uh, of our relationship with Christ, with God. And so Christ finds us naked, bleeding, and wounded beside the road. And he picks us up and takes us to the end of the church and says, care for them until I come again. That is, the, until the second coming. So the church is here to nurture us and to treat our, our wounds and to heal us in, in, until the second coming of Christ. So really that's uh, another way of looking at that parable or that story that helps us understand what the church, what Christ, what redemption is really all about. That our, our human nature itself uh, became ill. Mankind is not totally depraved or totally bad. Mankind is essentially good. We're created in the image and likeness of God. We're essentially good. and. Uh, evil is a parasite, a sickness, and it's that sickness that afflicts the human nature. So we constantly have what Apostle Paul said, the struggle within us to do what we know is appropriate, but always being drawn to do the opposite, to do something uh, bad. And then we have to understand that the church as a spiritual hospital is healing us, but we're not healed all at once. We're healed little by little. We, we recover little by little. And then we also have to understand from that what the true meaning of, of sin is. Because very often we use a, a kind of legalistic idea, sin as guilt, or sin as breaking the law. But that isn't what the word means. In, in the original Greek, the word hamartia means to miss the mark of the goal that we've been called toward. To miss the mark of the goal of that image and likeness of God which is implanted in us at creation. And that mark or goal is first and foremost unselfish love more than anything else. Uh, and sin is really missing the mark of the goal of union with God. So even something that we might think is virtuous or good can be a sin because it can through pride or something else separate us from God. Uh, we can actually lose our souls through our virtues as well as through our vices because we think of them in terms of me, myself and I and we're, we're doing something good because it's the law. Not because it comes from the heart and not because it comes from love but only because it's the law. And when we do that, it has no spiritual value at all. It's certainly good for society if we obey the law. But if we obey the law from fear of punishment, it has no value, no spiritual value. Where even if we repent from fear, we're not repenting that we did something, we're repenting that we can't get away with it because it's motivated by fear. And fear is sometimes the kindergarten of faith. It's for infants. It's not for people who have matured in the faith at all. Uh, we often fear God because he's the unknown. And so long as he's unknown, we fear the unknown. But the more we know God, the more we love him. 